everybody welcome to Ruby's Classic Cooking. Today I'm doing roast turkey. So let me show you what I'm going to add to my turkey. I have here salt and pepper mixed together. I have a couple of onions. I have some carrots already peeled. And I have my secret ingredient which is summer savory. Summer savory is not winter savory. It's not sage. It's not savory. It's summer savory, and it is the magic ingredient to add to your turkey or your chicken or any poultry to bring out the flavor and make an amazingly cooked turkey. That being said, I usually do all this at my sink, but for today I'm going to do it for you right here in front of the camera. So, I got, this is an 8.01 kilo bird, which is 17.7 pounds. So, a nice giant turkey. I'll tell you a tip about roasting turkey. The smaller birds, three to five kilos, which is about um, seven, five, six, seven pounds of turkey, they're very difficult to have them come out and be moist and tender because the smaller bird, denser bone, less meat to bone ratio, it's harder to cook it because it dries out faster. If you cooked a turkey, a chicken of that size, you wouldn't have that kind of a problem. But since it's a turkey with the denser bones, bigger is better. When I can get an eight or nine kilo bird, which is like anything about 15 pounds, I don't like to roast a turkey that's under 15 pounds because they dry out very easily. Like 10 minutes can make the difference between juice in your breast meat and something that's dried out. Oops. So first of all, I take it out of the plastic wrap, and which I've already done, and I do a bit of trimming. If there's extra, I take the, I look inside the body cavity, and if there's a neck, I take that out, and I check back here in the back part, and if that's where the goodie bag is hanging out, make sure you take that out. And if there's a whole lot of extra neck skin, I cut that off, because you don't really need that extra skin in your turkey. Nobody's going to eat it anyway. And if it's got one of those plastic things holding legs together, well, I pull it off and get rid of it. Because I want to get access to my body cavity. Now, I don't stuff my turkey. I never do stuffing or dressing. Nobody in my family particularly likes it, so I never have. So, what I do, I put the goodie bag contents to one side. And sometimes I'll fry up that chicken heart, that turkey heart, and that turkey liver for lunch. It's kind of the cook's treat when I read around my family. So I'm just going to chop these onions up into nice big, I've already peeled them. These are just plain old yellow onions and I'm just going to cut them into quarters. And this is what I'm going to put in my body cavity. I'm going to throw a couple of pieces of, of well actually I'm probably going to put most of an onion into my body cavity. I put it around the top of my drumsticks. I put it up, up here where the neck cavity is. I put a piece up there. I want to spread the flavor around on my turkey. I just put onion everywhere. Just chop it up into nice big chunks and put chunks of onion all around my turkey. And that's, and I don't do that very tidily or neatly or anything else. It's just put it around there so it adds flavor to the meat. And I take my carrots and I just chop these up into three or four big pieces. Probably three. These ones are quite small. And I throw these pieces of my carrot just into my body cavity and into my under my neck area here, back here in the back. Carrots will add a lovely sweet flavor to your meat. And they will lovely. They will add a nice flavor to your, to your turkey. I just like to throw them in here. And that sort of adds something to the inside of my body cavity, but not much. I'm going to take my salt and pepper, and I usually I do this separately, but this morning I'm just going to do this as one combo. There we go, sprinkle it all around your turkey, on your skin everywhere. I like to put it all over the turkey. And I like to put some inside the body cavity. Usually when I'm doing it at the same time, I kind of take it and I almost give it a, a salt bath all over the skin. Because it helps, I don't know, my mom used to say it took the off flavors out when you put some in the body cavity. 
Of course, nowadays you're not going to get those off flavors because, you know, you've got a nice fresh, fresh frozen turkey, right? So I'm almost working with something a bit more down on the firm. <laughs> might have been a bit more dodgy and the salt would take that away that off flavor away I'm gonna rub my chicken my turkey wings chicken wings rub my turkey wings here with some salt and pepper mixture I may do this every year because I don't need to get the pepper out separately there we go oh, good. that's my oven telling me that it's up to temperature which by the way is 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 163 degrees Celsius so Let's get into the good stuff, which is the summer savory, which I'm going to put all over my turkey. Just a second while I get my hands washed. And now I'm going to add my secret ingredient, generously, summer savory. All over the outside of my skin, just sprinkle it all over the place. Yeah, I'm doing this, just sprinkle, 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 sprinkle everywhere. In some inside the body cavity. And this will add the most beautiful flavor to your turkey, let me tell you. There we go. Lots of summer savory. And now my turkey's ready to go in the oven. And let's see, 17.77 pound turkey is, let's see, I'm going to put this in the oven for three hours and I'm not going to even crack the oven. I'm just going to leave it in there uncovered to roast. Because a turkey this size, it'll just be starting to get some juice built up inside of it. And when that happens, I'll be getting my baster out, my turkey baster out, and I will be basting this turkey old school, which is what I do with my turkey. Every hour, every half hour after that, I'll be basting it, and when it starts to look golden brown, and it starts to look like it's more cooked, then I'll be testing it to see what temperature, make sure it gets up to the proper temperature. Once that happens, I'll be getting it out of the oven and giving it a good wrap in foil and letting it sit for a while so all those juices will soak back into the turkey and make, give me a nice flavorful me meat. Now I find I can roast this as one big piece and my drumsticks will be cooked and my breast meat will not be dried out. Now this particular turkey is a butter ball so there's already butter put in underneath of the skin of this so I don't have to do anything else to it but put it in the oven. But I will be basting it later. I'll be back in about three hours for me which will be nothing for you and show you the next step in my turkey roasting. <laughs> Hi again everybody. I didn't bring it back at three hours. It's a little past three hours, but my kitchen's kind of full of people making Thanksgiving dinner today. So anyway, I took my turkey out of three hours and looked at it. It's not done. So I put it for, in there for, for another hour, but while it was out, I did baste it. So I took my turkey baster. There's a little bit of juice in the bottom of the pan and I sucked that up and I squirted it all over the turkey breast and the turkey legs just to moisten them, just to moisten the skin. And now I'm also going to talk to you about gravy. Now, making lump-free gravy is kind of a skill, but it's also a learning curve. As soon as my turkey goes in the oven, I take my shaker out and I put about 250 milliliters of water, that's a cup of water in the bottom roughly, then I put about three quarters of a cup, half a cup, three quarters of a cup, somewhere in there, flour on top of it. And that's about, um, oh, I'll have to look up the milliliters. Anyway, um, but don't worry, everything will be in the description file below. So what I do is I put that there and I leave it for about three hours just to sit there and soak. And you can see that my flour is now soaked into my water. And then I take this, you can use any kind of um, really airtight jar to do this and then you just shake it like you're shaking up a cocktail in a bar and then when you're finished you'll have great you'll have um, flour and water that looks like a paste so then when you have your turkey you get your turkey out of your roaster and you put it on your carving board and you have all your juice left in your pan depending on how much juice you have sometimes there's very little juice out of a turkey so then I will put some water in my tea kettle and boil my tea kettle and have some water handy that's hot and I'll add that to my juice. But if there's plenty of juice in my turkey, and I will just take my take my my mixture here and I will put my I just put my roasting pan on top of the stove. Now I have a roaster. If you just have a foil roaster, I would drain that into a, a saucepan with a good bottom on it. And just stir your 
flour paste mixture into the boil, you know, bring it to a boil and stir this in as it goes. And then you just keep stirring constantly at the stove until you have it, it's thick, until you have the right thickness. You just keep stirring at the stove until you have the right thickness of the gravy. And then put it in your gravy boat, or I, yeah, I, use, I actually use a pitcher when I'm doing this, and it, uh, it works out really well because when you take gravy to the table, if you have a big open gravy boat, your gravy has a lot of surface area to cool off really fast, and you want hot gravy on your food, not cold gravy. And I found that a big milk jug is perfect, like a big ceramic milk jug holds the heat, and sometimes I fill it up with hot water just to make sure it stays hot longer. Drain out the water, add your gravy, and uh, you have a good pitcher with a nice handle on it to pass around at the table, and hot gravy to put on your, on your potatoes. Which of course, we're going to have lots of mashed potatoes. We're having squash, mashed potatoes, turnip, and peas along with our gravy today. So we're going to have lots and lots of goodies today to go with our meal. With a 15 to 17 pound turkey, I will just um, wait that initial three hours, do my basting, then every hour after that, I baste. Now your skin is going to start to look golden brown, but when you're sucking up the juice from the inside of your turkey with your baster, you will see red in it, so you know that your turkey's not done. You don't even have to test it yet because it's nowhere near cooked. So every hour, I'll be checking on my turkey, and when it tests is done, then I'll take it out of the oven and I'll wrap it up in foil and I'll wrap it up in towels and things and let it sit just in the roaster on the stove for probably 20 minutes just to rest the turkey. And while that's going on, we'll be getting the vegetables finished, getting the potatoes mashed and getting all the other vegetables ready to go on the table. So I'll bring you back then and I'll show you what's going on. But that's all I'm doing to my turkey for the next several hours. Anyway, I'll be back. My turkey is now out of the oven. You can see back here, the, uh, it's out of my oven, wrapped up in towels. And I'm going to leave it sit there for an hour to let the juices all get back into it. It wasn't quite done when I tested the leg. It was up to 73 degrees Celsius, which uh, it's supposed to come up to 83, 81, 80, 81 or 82. But then again, I have another chart that says it's done at 74. So. Anyway, the breast meat was definitely above 82 degrees Celsius, and I'll have to look that up in Fahrenheit. Sorry, my scale is, my, my probe is in Celsius and not calibrated in Fahrenheit. Anyway, so the breast meat tested is done, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to take it out, I'm going to wrap it up, and the residual heat of the turkey, since it's an 18-pound turkey, will bring that meat around the leg up to full, full doneness while it's sitting there for an hour. So anyway, it's very close to being done. And I find sometimes my probe is a little bit off because when you actually take the bird apart, it's done at the, at the joints. Turkey's gonna sit there for an hour and just absorb all the juices and muscle meat relax and all that kind of good stuff. Then we'll get to carving it. I got my nice wooden carving board out here, ready to carve my turkey on. And the potatoes are now on. And so as the turnip, the squash is in the microwave, it just has to be nuked because I sort of partly cooked it yesterday. And pies are done right here, as you can see. So dinner is pretty much ready. So uh, I'll be back when we're ready to carve the turkey. All right, carving the turkey. Oh, golden brown and beautiful. Look at that. Turkey carving is underway and the leg is already off. Look at that. Yummy, delicious turkey. And now I'm going to start the gravy, which is a lot of stirring and adding the flour paste water that I showed you earlier and stirring until the turkey is done. So the breast just needs to be carved off of here. The legs come off first and the wings and then the breast gets carved up. We'll have two lovely platters of meat because that's like a 17 and a half pound bird. So there you go. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Or Christmas or whenever you're cooking this turkey, but ours is for Thanksgiving today. So 
There we go. <laughs> you on video, Eric. All right. And you'll have to mention the carving the breast Jamie Oliver style. Yes. Imagine that your okay, son-in-law is carving <laughs> the turkey. All right, everybody. I hope you're having a great day out there, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And I hope you'll subscribe and like and make some happy comments. And happy Thanksgiving from all of us to all of you. Bye for now.